Well, hello, hello, everyone. Uh, this is um, the typical, normal, amazing, fantastic Amazon interview Q&A event. Uh, welcome, everyone who's just joining us, wherever you're joining. Uh, my name is Evgeny. Uh, Gigi and I run Day One Careers together. And normally, we open this session together, but today... Gigi is running just a little bit late, so I'm going to open the session together for us and run this Q&A until she joins, at which point we're going to be dry, uh, driving the Q&A together. So we've got some folks already joining. Uh, please post your comment into the stream to say hello. Let us know where you're joining from. And most importantly, and this is the reason why we're doing what we're doing, post your question. Any questions about Amazon interview, um, primarily focused on all things non-technical, all things behavioral, which is where our expertise is. And if we don't know something that you guys are interested in, we're going to try and point, point you towards those resources that we believe will answer your questions. As I mentioned before, my name is Yevgeny. Uh, Gigi and I run Day One Careers together, and we try to do these Q&A sessions together. And so, um, yeah, post your questions. Let's keep them going. Any question is absolutely good. So I see that we've got someone here from London, UK. Welcome. Um, now we've got someone from Texas as well. Good morning. Uh, or is it good afternoon? And we've got folks joining from Denver, Colorado. Hello, hello. Welcome to the session. Great to have you with us. So... Get your questions posted, folks. We're going to try and answer as many of them as we can within this hour that we're with you. Um, so meanwhile, while you guys are coming up with questions, uh, let me just introduce myself. So as I mentioned, my name is Yevgeny. Um, I run Day One Careers together with Gigi. Prior to starting Day One Careers, I worked at Apple um, as a regional e-commerce uh, business development manager in developing markets. But before Apple, I spent over three years at Amazon as a senior leader, as a hiring manager, as an interviewer, amongst a whole bunch of other things. And I started Day One Careers in August 2020, shortly after leaving Amazon, because I saw, similarly to Gigi, that folks who come prepared and really well prepared to Amazon interviews tend to do a lot better. So I've made it my mission, together with Gigi, to make Amazon interview expertise available to as many people as we possibly can. So there we are. And as soon as Gigi joins, she will also introduce herself. Although I'm guessing if you guys have seen her videos, she will be uh, nothing new to you that you will already feel like you know her for quite a while. But I see that we've got some questions coming through. So let me see if um, I can pull up something. So this one is from GT. Let me just see if I can pull myself above the questions so you guys can see my talking head. So GT, welcome to the session. So what do we have here? So you've got a loop interview this Thursday, but you couldn't get a session with one of us or you couldn't get on the wait list. Could you please let me know how I can get on the wait list? So um, if you can just um, write us an email at uh, support at day one dot careers. We're going to add you in. Apologies for the inconvenience. Usually the wait list works. I don't know, maybe something just broke down. And if someone cancels, we're going to try and see if we can accommodate you. Let's move to the next question. So this one is coming from Clive. What's the best way to prepare for the loop? So the best way to prepare for the loop, and I'm going to assume that it's a non technical loop, is to do two things. Uh, actually, three things. Number one is really understand the leadership principles of Amazon. They are the absolute DNA, um, the cultural code of Amazon. It is how Amazon hires. It is how Amazon promotes. Um, it is how Amazon takes all of their talent decisions. And so your non-technical interview will be following the uh, behavioral interview scenario, which means that they're going to be testing you almost exclusively on the leadership principles. So you need to know them in details. You need to go um, one level beyond the official definitions. The second thing you need to do is you need to learn 
and practice and learn how to frame answers to behavioral interview questions into five to eight minute opening stories. Um, and that's not something that comes natural to most candidates. And if, especially if you haven't been interviewing for quite a while, so you really need to invest time in doing it. And number three, practice, 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 practice with partners, with, um, well, your, your partner, if you've got one, if you don't, with your friends. Um, we've got a free community at Day One Careers. Um, you get access to it as soon as you uh, get yourself a, uh, a free course that you will find on our website. Uh, as soon as you get that free course, you, we're going to send you the link on how to join our Discord. Feel free. It's free for you. Just join, find interview partners, and and practice, practice, practice. So um, we obviously uh, offer paid resources, which, which we believe are the best in class in the industry. So um, uh, the our flagship course, Amazon Interview Wiz, is the online self-study course that will cover everything you need in order to get you prepared. And then the the, the only thing that would left for you to do is to practice. But um, let's um, start going through other questions. I hope that I managed to answer this one. Right, so um, here we go. Here's a question. Could you please um, help to know how to identify the exact LP in a question, a lot of them overlap. I have identified at my end by going through the JD. So how do you identify the leadership principle uh, from the question? Um, so the more you practice answering uh, behavioral interview questions, especially if you use the right question lists, right? So Gigi and I have pulled together a very extensive and fully vetted list of questions. Um, you can get it um, as soon as uh, you either purchase one of our premium courses or if you go to our blog and you uh, find the post about Amazon interview questions, I believe the URL is blog.day1.careers slash Amazon dash interview dash questions. We actually made the full list, the extensive list of Amazon interview questions, um, fully vetted and structured around the LPs uh, available for free. So you can just get it there, download the PDF, and um, that's the way that you can uh, map them to the leadership principles. Some questions, um, they come across as they overlap. For example, there is a question, a very similar question that comes up under both earn trust and ownership, which has to do with a situation when you thought that you were unable to deliver on a commitment. In one, under one LP, it is phrased as, tell me about a time when you were unable to meet a commitment or keep a promise. Under another LP, it's phrased as, tell me about a time when you thought you were going to default on your promise. Similar wording, but different, um, sort of. And because uh, one is about ownership, one is about earned trust. Um, so what I would say is if you practice a lot, then you will identify the leadership principles automatically. And then the whole objective of practicing with partners is that when you actually get into your interview, you don't need to think about what leadership principle it is. You will already know you will be in the zone and you will just focus on answering the question and you will have stories prepared. So let's keep going. Right. Du, 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 du. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Folks, if we're not picking your question, it sometimes means that we it's out outside of our area of expertise. And now Gigi is about to join. Hello, Gigi. Hi. Can you hear me okay? I've got my weird headset on. You've got an amazingly beautiful headset on. I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes. Brilliant. That's very reassuring because otherwise I would have been talking to myself in front of all these folks. We've got 34 people joining us today, Gigi. So I was going through questions right now, introduced myself, and we're just going through the questions. Awesome. Right. Let's dig in. So, um, right. I'm going to pick the next one so that Gigi knows where exactly we are in the question <laughs> list. And then we're going to unpick them one by one by one. Right. So here's a question from Jim. Hello, Jim. Hi. I have my screening interview with HR tomorrow for a sales position. What do I expect? So to answer your question, um, in a 
Um, well, it's actually, this doesn't look like a typical phone screen because this is with HR. So expect a little bit of everything. Expect them to understand, um, or not just understand, expect them to double click on some of the things about or on your resume. They're probably going to um, ask you to talk about um, uh, some of your career claims, contributions, everything that you've got in there. They may throw a leadership principle question at you. I've seen HR folks do it. Um, so it's a general um, sort of uh, uh, check on your motivation, on your functional fit to the role. They may ask you why Amazon. They may ask you to tell me about yourself. So um, not, n there isn't a single scenario that they're going to follow, but um, I wouldn't be too concerned about the, uh, the first uh, interview with the HR. It's relatively lightweight. So I think that's all I've got to say on this. Gigi, do you have a question that you'd like to pick? Oh, okay. Sorry, I was distracted. I was just listening to your wonderful answer and not paying attention to the questions down the side. So hang on a second. Um, okay, there's another prep call question there. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to do this one then from Saperna. Hello. Okay, so you're having an on-site visit. So for everybody out there, there's lots of different language used for the final stage of the Amazon interview process. So you might have final rounds, you might have panel, you might have loop, or you might have on-site. The reason why on-site is there is it always used to be in person back in ye, ye olde days. Uh, that doesn't happen so much anymore. Even pre-COVID, they were migrating to towards virtuals. So but the language still sticks. It's like most things once the word becomes used for something. So that's what um, Supana is talking about. She's going to final stage. What kind of behavioral questions can you expect? Will it be based on the role you're being interviewed for? Uh, yes and no is the answer to that. So the behavioral questions are the behavioral questions. They don't change according to the role that you are applying for. There is not one set of behavioral questions for product managers, a different one for technical product managers, a different one for finance managers, a different one for vendor managers, a different one for brand managers, a different one for marketing managers, a different one for solutions architects, a different one for S software development managers, I could go on forever. There are not unique lists for each job family. That said, there are unique questions for the individual leadership principles. And there are different leadership principles that are more important for some roles than they are for others. So, Sapana, what you need to try and do is identify what you believe are the most important leadership principles for your particular role. There are a couple of ways of doing that. The first is to ask your recruiter, which is usually the most accurate way of doing it. Your odds are probably about 50-50 of your recruiter agreeing to give them to you. That's kind of our experience, like 50-50 odds on when people do ask. Uh, there are no reasons not to ask. There's no black marks. If they say, sorry, I can't tell you, you just say politely, okay, understood, thank you very much. The second route is to do it yourself. So there is a playlist on our YouTube channel that is a job description deconstruction where I showcase live how you can review your job description and identify the keywords that link to the leadership principles. So go there as your second option. And then the final option is we offer a service where we can do that deconstruction for you. So that's your third. Um, option. But effectively, once you know what the most important leadership principles are, you can then take a look at and assume that the questions you'll get asked are going to more likely come from those leadership principles than from others. We have a very excellent blog on the Day One Careers website where you can go and check out a list of uh, leadership principle questions that we've identified from around the web associated with individual leadership principles. So that will help you with predicting what questions you may or may not get at your interview okay that's it that's me down anything else to add there Evgeny no I think this was brilliantly answered as always so on to the next question and this one is nope. oh, sorry there we go there we I go this one is... <laughs> so this one is from Ham um, and um, the question is in the general chat I'm assuming I'm going to assume it's a he um, so he saw a discussion about L6 loop, and the question is, is there any major difference in the preparation uh, between the L7 loop versus an L6 loop? 
I'm going to go ahead and say that in terms of your personal preparation for the behavioral part of an L7 loop versus an L6 loop, there probably isn't. Um, we cover the question of level quite extensively in one of our products, Amazon Interview Wiz, but since you're here. So the difference between expectations uh, of Amazon at an L6 and L7 has to do a lot with how big the job is, right? And there are some sub sort of categories in terms of how they look at how big the job is. The thing is, um, you need to pick examples where you have demonstrated the biggest amount of impact, where you've handled jobs with the biggest scope, solved problems of the biggest complexity and navigated, navigated through the most difficult and ambiguous challenges that you've got. Um, it also means that you might need to look for examples that are a lot more recent in case you've been progressing well and you're at your most senior level in your most recent role. And then essentially you just have to let the chips fall where, uh, fall where they're, well they're made. So there isn't a different strategy. You still have to maximize the level sickness as much as you can. Do you agree, Gigi? Yep. Not much else you can do. Excellent. Shall we move on? Yep. I've been scrolling, trying to find something, actually. There's lots of inter, inter chat chat. I like inter chat chat. It, yeah, inter chat chat is good. I mean, look, we're all about the community. Um, gosh, I look very, I look like I'm in the dungeon again, don't I? It's like the sun is so low here. Do you like my blue nails, by the way? I love your blue nails. I also um, love the nice shadows and highlights. It's awful, isn't it? It's the sun is so low in my house. The coming down, it's like it's like blind or or not. So I'm sorry, it does look horribly stark. Right. Anyway, Do you like my yellow background, by the way. I thought that was pretty. I quite like it. I like the fade, like the grey through to the uh, the gradient <laughs> look there. Um, yeah, I, I I don't know. Lighting such a nightmare. Anyway, moving on. Um, Okay, yes, I'm going to go for this one from Gunai. I'm going to assume it's Gunai. I'm so sorry if I've mispronounced your name. Please apologize to your parents for me. Um, if you've answered all the LP questions, but one functional question was not good, will that influence the votes for other, other interviewers? Okay, how important is LP questions versus functional questions? Okay, so... There's no mathematical weighting that happens in the debrief process to decide whether you're raising the bar or not. So it's not that your function is weighted 40% and your behavior is weighted 60%. It doesn't work like that. It's kind of an overall view that the team have on whether you are raising the bar or not. Um, there is, however, I guess a basic technical standard that you would need to achieve that the team needs to be comfortable you can achieve in order to be able to do the job. So if you don't meet that minimum bar, then it's pretty unlikely that they're going to hire you because it's a minimum functional bar. They've got to trust that you can actually do the job. Now, that said, there are elements of functional skills that can be trained. So if you are, you know, if you've met the minimum, but perhaps aren't blowing their minds in terms of your functional capability, but they believe you're very strong on the leadership principle, there will be a level of forgiveness, I suppose, that they're likely to agree to take because they feel they can coach you. So there's no black and white answer on this. There's no answer that I can give you in terms of how important one is over the other. There's simply a basic capability line that you have to cross when it comes to the functional. And then overall, the team has to take a view that you are, in fact, raising the bar on the leadership principles. But if you are unimpressive on the leadership principles and amazing on technical, you're very unlikely to make it through. Your bar raiser will not allow that. If you're slightly less impressive on the technical and raising the bar on the leadership principles, you're more likely to be able to make it. I think that's my somewhat complex summary. Anything to add, Evgeny? Nothing to add. Nothing to add. A very extensive, Gigi. So this one, just looking at the picking the next question, and um, we've got this very frequently asked question, so I'm going to Make my job, we make my life easier, and I'm just gonna go ahead and answer it. So, Agarwal, is this is it okay to repeat the answer in the behavioral interview uh, in behavioral interview question? Um, also, what 
to do if the recruiter is not communicating at all in terms of process and the position requirement. Right. I think the first one is probably easier to answer than the second one. So the first one is, uh, can you repeat answers? Yes, you can. But you need to make sure that you're not repeating the story verbatim. Um, because as you can imagine, in real life, you've got situations where you might have demonstrated multiple behaviors that map to multiple leadership principles. However, when they run an interview, they've got a particular leadership principle in mind when they're asking you a question. So what you need to do, if you want to use the same professional context to answer more than one question, you just need to frame, quote unquote, sell different behaviors for a different question. So the overall professional context could be the same, could be the same project, could be the same macro, big situation, but um, you need to focus on a different aspect. And the best way to uh, figure out what to focus on is to understand uh, the leadership principles in detail. And if you do that, you will be able to take exactly the same professional context and then chop it into two stories um, that each of them focuses on uh, a different leadership principle. Anything to add, Gigi? I will add something, if I may. So I think overall, the kind of the guidance is, if you can avoid repeating, do avoid repeating. I think that's the overall kind of ambition. However, that's very difficult for a lot of people. Either they don't have an enormous amount of experience behind them, or you just get asked so many questions, it's impossible not to. So at that point, then absolutely 100% aligned with what Evgeny says. But overall, if you can avoid it, do try. That would be my advice. And I still don't, I haven't picked another one. I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm kind of obviously not on the ball here yet. So let's, I'll just quickly have a look for another one. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Shavam. I'm going to go for this. So first of all, I recognize your picture. So you've obviously been here before. So first of all, I'm going to say, yay, congratulations. I, amazing, Siobhan. I suppose I would have said that to anybody, but I have seen you here before. So amazing. And hopefully the work that you've done with our channel helped you secure that job with the other company. So you've got a job with another company. You're interested in joining Amazon, but you don't want to turn down the offer. Any other, any suggestions? Um, I guess my off, my suggestion would buy yourself some time. I'm sure Evgeny will have some thoughts on this as well, but I would say try and buy yourself some time with the other company. Um, you know, sometimes it's worth saying, you know, I've got to be honest with you, I am uh, currently in process with um, another few employers, possibly helps you in terms of your negotiation um, position with the person that you've got the offer from already, and see if you can get some extra time to come back and give them your final decision. At the same time, I would reach out to your recruiter at Amazon and let your recruiter at Amazon know that you have an offer from another company and that you have until X date in order to give them your answer. That will hopefully put a little bit of rocket up places um, and get them to make sure that you're... <laughs> I always have to be careful what I say here, Evgeny, because like that's okay. We've we've imagined everything yes, already. Yes, that's right. Yes, nothing My to Britishness. add. Yeah, there are some there are some kind of lines that we cross much more comfortably here in the UK. Um, but yes, get them. Hopefully, that will help expedite your uh, debrief and make sure that the debrief actually does happen, or even you know, expedite your loop and make sure that your loop does actually happen as quickly as possible. So I guess that's my advice there anything to add Evgeny I just one tip that um, I personally took advantage when I was negotiating with Amazon I already had an offer from a different company and boy did I drag my feet with the contract I think I've got usually when I got an offer and they sent me a contract I used to sign it on the dotted line but with that one because I knew that I was interviewing with Amazon I really had some questions to ask and they did engage the lawyers to answer my questions and then obviously I rejected the offer so there you go one tip <laughs> That's a good extra one. I shall make a mental note of that one. Cool. Uh, let's see. Okay, let me... Yeah, yeah, let's go. Okay, there you go. 
Um, so this one is from Syed, and uh, the question is, is it appropriate to ask at the end of the loop interview to see if there's a possibility for transfer in early years to another country? So I am going to say, um, get the information that you want, but be a little bit careful about how you phrase it. That's all I'm going to say. For example, you know, you don't want to communicate to the interviewing team that your only motivation is to essentially hit it and quit it oops there's another britishness that just <laughs> came out i don't know where they're coming out these things but you know what i mean right that you just want to get the job to leave to a different country Which, by the way it's absolutely normal normal is a great motivation at some point in time i decided to transfer internationally it's a great experience so just ask them so you know what's you know what's what's it like at amazon to um you know to develop your career internationally it's an absolutely normal question and they're going to answer you. But just don't telegraph to them that you want to uh, leave after six months because if I was a hiring manager, I'd be a little bit not suspicious, but it's just, it wouldn't be something nice for me to hear in terms of your motivation. Gigi, anything to add? No, that's it exactly. That's what I'd say. Awesome. Okay, cool. So I want to, there's someone here that needs congratulating. So hang on, I lost them a second ago. Where are they? They were further up and we jumped over them. Oh, do you know what? I lost them, but I will find them again. So I will answer the question that I want to answer. And oh, there they are. Inflated ego. There you are. I knew I found you. That's a great shirt. Is there a matching kind of, oh, that's a hood, isn't it? I thought there was a matching bag that went with that, but no, that's a that's hood. That's a really good, cool hood. <laughs> that's a great shirt. Okay. So uh, congratulations. So you interviewed for an L4 role internally. So you're already an Amazonian. I love it when Amazonians use our content and achieve their goals because that doubles down and kind of, what do they call it? Like double, you you have a word for it. What, double tap. There you go. Double, double tap. Taps, double taps on the quality of what we're providing. We can even help Amazonians get roles. So you got an offer and you're going to Luxembourg. We were chatting about Luxembourg the other day, weren't we, Evgeny? lovely country yes we were yes we very were nice. i'm curious if um if you've ever been to luxembourg it's a very nice place amazing place to live um, one of the biggest pay scales in europe in general not just at amazon so yeah hope you will like right. it congratulations very proud okay so let me just move on to manjusha who has a question so i've gone back up evgeny i've brought us back up the list um, how do you know if your answers for the leadership principle have covered all of the important points or if they are raising the bar for the job that you are applying to? OK, so I'm going to deal with the second part first and then we'll go deal with the first part. So the second part is you will never know that they're raising the bar. That's nothing you will ever know. And that's nothing any coach will ever really be able to tell you. They'll be able to tell you based on their experience of people that they have um Clearly, this can only be someone who's an actual Amazonian, not someone who's never worked at Amazon. They'll be a, a coach will be able to tell you based on their experience uh, what a bar raising candidate would look like, having done all of the interviews that they've done and all of the debriefs and all the higher no higher offers they've done. They'll be able to give it to you based on their experience. Challenges: the bar is always moving; it's always rising. So, what was bar raising yesterday will not be bar raising. Tomorrow was bar raising six months ago, won't be bar raising now. So that's the first thing to bear in mind. What also is bar raising is actually relatively subjective. It's a function of the collective experiences of everybody that's on your panel who will reflect on what type of work they've seen people at that level, the level above and the level below do in their day to day lives. So it's not something that anyone can ever write down and say to you, if you do this, that, that, that and that you will be bar raising. So let's kind of knock that one on, off the head, on the head. First part, how will you know if the answers for the leadership principle have covered all of the important points? Well, we can tell you whether your answers cover all of the important points because that's exactly what our leadership principle part of our Amazon interview whiz course does. It will tell you exactly pretty much what the interviewer is looking for in your answers and what all of the important behaviors that they're looking for for each leadership principle. So at the end of this, we do give uh, an incredible freebie, which is our customer obsession leadership principle course, which is one of the 16 that are part of our Amazon interview with course. And there's plenty of other stuff uh, on top of that. But please go and take that one for free. And you'll see exactly what the key points that you need to hit are for customer obsession. And then if you like it, maybe you can investigate the course overall. 
that's it. Okay. Going to let you move on now, Evgeny. Excellent. And we're going to move on to Tarek, whose question is, is there a benefit in identifying the LP of the question before answering if you already have a situation in mind? I'm going to go ahead and say that if you have been practicing, if you have studied the leadership principles and all of their facets, if you've been practicing with partners, if you have been using the right questions that map to the right LPs, then in the actual interview, if they ask you a question and you've got a situation in mind, it means that you're in the zone, you're ready to answer. And I think that uh, if you've done your prep well, then in the actual interview, you can just focus on answering the questions. And then you just have to believe that your brain will do the magic and all the preparation will pay off. So that would be my answer. I'm going to go for um, another one. Sorry, I had to get my snack. I'm hungry. I've been in my office for like seven hours straight. I said, or maybe seven, etc. About at least five Ooh, hours chickpeas. straight. Chickpeas. I need to. Yes, baked chickpeas with uh, like chili and um, paprika on them. They're very good. It's my latest thing. Okay. For, um, Amazon interview training and health advice. Come. To, uh, <laughs> <just> <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> That'd be a real extension of our portfolio, wouldn't it? Okay. Um, oh. Okay. I'm going to do this one. Austin. Hello, Austin. My dad's name was Austin. Don't meet, come across very many Austins. Okay. How long does a typical hiring process take? You had your first interview a week ago, but still haven't scheduled a second with the hiring manager. Yeah, I mean, a week isn't very much, to be honest with you. So what we can tell you is first, there is no typical hiring process. It does not exist. The actual process itself doesn't exist in kind of a single form. There are, I think I counted, I think there's somewhere along the lines of nine different ways that I know of that you can make your way through various different stages of the Amazon interview process. So that in itself tells you there's no kind of typical. And then even within those nine different stages, there are different timelines because it's all going to be dependent on how busy your recruiter is, how busy your hiring manager is, how easy it is to get the panel together, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the answer is no, I cannot tell you the typical hiring process length of time. But what I will say is I'd say a week having not heard back about a second schedule isn't uncommon. I think we have plenty of people in our community who wait you know, a couple of weeks to actually hear back from their recruiter in terms of a second interview, sometimes even longer. So just Austin, hold on. You know, you've made it past the first hurdle. If you are interviewing with other companies, keep going. Like, don't stop anything. If even if you think you're making your way through the Amazon process, just keep pushing forward with all of your other interviews and just be proactive when it comes to following up with your recruiter. Never be embarrassed to say, look, I'm still here. I'm still interested, keen to get a date in, etc. We at um, Day One Careers really do uh, recommend to candidates that you own your own process. Don't be passive in it. Make sure that you're driving process forward contacting your recruiter be polite obviously and don't harass them and I email them every day but you know once a week once every few days if you're waiting for the actual outcome that's fine anything to add Evgeny no I just wanted to also acknowledge that uh, we've got a question from Chris Summers which is similar not the same but very similar about the logistics and the etiquette of following up and all I can say is Chris I think Gigi has just covered your question. So just follow her advice in terms of following up. Um, obviously, do not sit on it if they don't respond, but um, uh, you know, just try to strike a balance. Um, so in, in, in his question, um, I think the recruiter hasn't come back to them in two days after the phone screen. So I'm going to say, you know, give them four or five days after that. Feel free to follow up. There's absolutely no harm. Just be polite. That's all. And I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and pick a different question. So here you go. Before you do, Evgeny, I'm just conscious of time. Um, so we just want to pause momentarily. This is your favorite part of the session. I still have to do a new one of these. <laughs> your favorite part. Two years so, after that, we're still going to be saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> no, we should put it on the sprint. Like, like, make sure we put it on the sprint, we and should. then I'll do it. Okay. So quickly, everybody. So we obviously put a huge amount of work into this channel, creating all of the videos, coming up with some amazing partnerships, spending this time here with you today. Obviously, we do it because we want to help. We wouldn't be doing this otherwise. But at the same time, we really do need to ask you a little bit of a favor in return. And the favor is anytime you watch one of our videos, um, please do either give it the thumbs up or um, give it a little uh, a comment in the comments. Sorry, I'm kind of multitasking here and I'm, I'm losing track. And you forgot to put the ticker on. There you go. Evgeny, honestly. I did. Oh, sorry, sorry. Right. So when you watch any of our videos, please give it a thumbs up or put a little comment in, even just to say hi to us. That would be amazing. The reason we ask is those are considered positive engagement signals by YouTube. If YouTube gets positive engagement signals from you, our viewers, it says, yeah, this content is great and it will promote us above some of the other terrible content that somehow outranks us in YouTube. I have no idea why or how, but it does. So we need your help to have those positive signals. So for this particular session, I'm going to ask you to please just take a couple of seconds and give this session, there you go, I never know where camera is, um, give this session a bit of a thumbs up. And whilst you do that, we're going to just play a little bit of a video as a little bit of a soundtrack to that, and then we'll come back and, and do some more questions. So here we go. We weren't dancing in the background. Really, we weren't. Nope. No dancing. <laughs> no dancing. Why would we want to embarrass ourselves? <laughs> of course, because we, we have shame. <laughs> I have no shame. I don't mind no. embarrassing myself. Right, go on, you pick. You were due to pick another one before I rudely interrupted you. I'm going to pick this one. It's not a question, but from a YouTube user who is uh, participating anonymously, it's just a bit of feedback that they took one of our courses and they were extending an offer. So congratulations. This is exactly what we like to hear. And, um, and now we're going to go for the question. So there you go. Chili for five. Hi, Gigi. I've just accepted an offer, but the onboarding team is not reaching to me. How long does that normally take? Two days from now. Um, I'm not sure there's a particular timeline for these things either. It's just literally a matter of diaries and diary conflicts on their side versus systems because it's not just the people it's the systems that need to kick in to get you established in, in, in all of these different systems and get your IDs and all that stuff so um, once you've got an offer it's absolutely fair game for you to follow up every couple of days feel free to do so um, once they have extended and you have accepted the offer everything's in the bag don't worry so it's just a matter of logistics at the moment keep following up cool Okay, so I'm just going to quickly, I'm going to just quickly do this and then I'll get to the, the question that I want, which is just below Chili for five. So let me just quickly pull this one up. So thank you, Daniel, who's made a little bit of a donation to us. So you, more importantly, you got an offer as a senior manager, L7. Nice. With transportation risk and compliance team. Actually, I did a JD review Um Daniel, I recognize your picture. I, I, see, I pay attention to people's images. So you've been with us for a little while as well. So yay, everyone congratulate Daniel, please. Um, um, thank you so much and uh, really delighted for you. And I know Evgeny will echo this. Everyone at Day One Careers wishes you a fantastic career. And as you're an L7, you will be hiring. So yay, don't forget us <laughs> and you're filling your team. Send your candidates our way. <laughs> I, see, I have no shame. No shame whatsoever. Right. Congrats, Daniel. I'm going to move on to that question that I wanted to answer, which is this one here. Right. Sarub, how are you? So you recently interviewed for a program manager role. And the interviewer kept asking you for a more recent scenario for two of your answers. Do I think that means he, she didn't like your previous examples? So this is about recency. And this is why we coach that recency is quite important. So our recommendation is that when you come up with your examples, that you don't go back much beyond four years. 
the reason why we coach this is in your examples, Amazon is looking for evidence that you behave a certain way and they want to see that you behave that way consistently. If you use examples from a very long time ago, they're going to be asking themselves, why is this person not demonstrating this behavior in the more recent past? Because the more recent information you share, the higher the probability that if you behave that way, let's say last month or six months ago, if you land in Amazon's business, you're very likely to behave that way tomorrow. If you give them evidence of how you behaved 15 years ago and don't provide the evidence that you're still behaving that way, their confidence levels that if you land in their business tomorrow, that you will behave that way tomorrow is significantly less than if you provided that evidence from a more recent example. So I think what's happening here is that your interviewer is getting the feeling that you're having to reach too far back into your career for evidence of a leadership principle or multiple leadership principle. And that's making them feel uncomfortable about whether you would demonstrate that behavior if you landed in the business tomorrow. The one caveat that I do say and we say is that if you have an incredible example, like a life changing career defining example from longer ago than four years, then use it. But it does need to be an impressive example that really kind of just like, wow, I can't believe this person at that level was able to do that. But literally one, maybe even two, but certainly no more than that. Try and make your examples as recent as possible. Anything to add, Evgeny? Nothing to add. I agree 100%. That's lucky. Cool. Now, we've got a question from... <clears throat> Clavagatas. I think I hope this this was correct. So hi Gigi. Hello. Um I have an <laughs> <laughs> I've got an OS interview for Amazon for an SVM role. Brilliant. You've made an Excel sheet with questions that you found online, but they are a lot. So maybe you should focus on a few experiences and which principles apply to each. So there's, um, I think your second question is something that Gigi and I both answered previously. And so I'm going to summarize. Yes, you can use one professional context and chop it into multiple situations, but only if you are struggling to find individual examples that map to different um, LPs. Now I'm going to come to your first question. And so it sounds like you are struggling with the idea of identifying enough professional experiences to map to every question. And our answer is don't do it. Do not try to map experiences to questions. Um, let's do a little quick mental math. So there are, what, 16 leadership principles. And in the official Amazon interview question bank, there might be, I don't know. I don't actually remember. 184. There's 184. The, the answer is, by the way, for anything in life is 184. So Gigi knows the answer, which is why she always says the answer. I actually don't know what the real uh, answer is, but it's 184. It's a lot. It's a lot. Of it is 184. I've counted them. And that's exactly what she says each time this thing comes up. So we're just going to have to believe her. But um, <laughs> okay. 184, folks. <laughs> There's no, I don't, I don't have 184 situations in my career. I don't know, Gigi, if you, Gigi, if you can identify them, which is why what we're saying is don't do it. Identify the themes or the facets of these principles and then identify situations that cover as many of them as you possibly can per um, situation. You only need two per every leadership principle. Um, how do you understand the main themes of leadership principles? You can obviously do it yourself. You can lift a whole bunch of information and resources, watch YouTube videos of Jeff Bezos, Andy Jassy, Jen, um, was it, or Jeff Wilkie, and a whole bunch of other great, amazing leaders. You can read books. You can lift shareholder letters. I mean, you can do a lot of research to understand what's behind the leadership principles, or you can take our free course, which um, I think you, we've got the link here in the ticker, and um, you will see the leadership principle facets for customer obsession, and you can do the same for all of the leadership principles on our website, and that will um, shrink down the necessity for um, proliferating 
answers to every question. Don't do it. So there you go. That's my answer. Anything to add, Gigi? Uh, only to say that the more you know about what the key leadership principles are for your role, the more you can focus on what possible questions you might need to focus on, given you've collected this huge collection anyway. So there we go. All right. Um, let's pick another one. Oh, OK. I'll do this one quickly for Pam. Hey, Pam. So the interviewer mentioned that the debrief is later on in the week and you should hear by the end of the week, which was three days after the interview. OK, so you had your interview like on the Tuesday, I suppose. Um, do recruiters reach out right after debrief to talk about the on-site result? It's very variable, Pam. They're, they're, unlike the SLA for hearing back, which is two days for uh, the early rounds and five days for um, loop, which to be honest with you, isn't very often met anyway. There's no SLA for how quickly the recruiter has to get back to you after the debrief with the outcome. Unfortunately, it's very much dependent on how busy your recruiter is. Probability, as I'm sure you will guess, is that if it's an inclined, you're probably more likely to hear quickly than if it's a not inclined, because obviously there are some other processes that then have to kick in in terms of salary um, conversations, etc. And your recruiter now smells blood because um, if they as soon as they manage to get an offer kind of agreed with you, they've done their job and they're obviously chasing targets. So there's more motivation for, an, for a recruiter to get back to you if the offer is a positive outcome than it is a negative outcome. So I think the advice that we gave earlier still stands, which is, you know, wait for those three days. Or actually, it's five days for debrief. So I would say wait five working days after your interview if you still haven't heard anything, just reach out to your recruiter. And then I would suggest reach out again, maybe two or three days after that. And then another two or three days after that. And then another two or three days after that until you actually get your answer. I hope that helps, Pam. Excellent response as always, Gigi. Here's a question about something I'm very passionate about, which is money. Uh, no, I'm... I'm not. I just want to make sure the candidates, uh, when they get offers, get compensated adequately and fairly. Mm -hmm. So Elaine is asking, she's coming from a different industry and she was sent an email requesting a salary range prior to her panel interview. Is it appropriate to ask the recruiter what the budget range is? Um, yes, of course it is. And why not? Now, um, the reality is that some recruiters will tell you what the range is. Some of them won't. Um, so just be prepared. Uh, for the negative answer that they're not going to share it with you, but there's no harm in asking. In fact, I'm going to go as far as, uh, as to say there is no harm in asking any questions, whether it's about salary or anything else about the job. Don't try, don't think that um, this whole space of asking questions or behaving in a certain way is just filled with traps and things not to do, especially with regards to asking questions. I can tell you that not asking questions is probably worse than asking a question that, you know, uh, that you may believe uh, to be a bit sensitive, but absolutely no harm in asking questions about the range. Um, but please do your own research about the ranges, get the information from anywhere you can, speak to friends friends, colleagues, um, just approach people on LinkedIn ask, and, and who work at Amazon and just um, honestly ask them what the ranges are. I've been approached when I was at Amazon and when I was at Apple by folks who were in the process and interviewing. And um, I found a way to guide them on what the ranges are but using my own salary without divulging confidential information because I believe uh, that uh, being compensated adequately is everyone's right. Anything to add, Gigi? Nope. Perfect, as always. Right, I'm going to pick this one here, Red Rain, because I want to congratulate you. So congratulations, Red Rain. You found about, out about us shortly before your loop, but you managed to get an L4, oh, SWE. Right, I was like, what is an SWE? But I'm assuming that's software engineer um, as opposed to SDE. So congratulations, that's fantastic. A great step onto the ladder at Amazon. I'm sure your career will go stellar. And you said, ah, thanks for the tips and the question list. Every LP question was on the list. OK, so what Red Rain is talking about is that we did a huge amount of work trawling the web 
pulling together every single Amazon interview question that we could find that was suggested would be an Amazon interview question. And then we scrubbed it completely, bearing in mind what we know about what you're likely to be asked and unlikely to be asked at an Amazon interview and created an incredibly comprehensive and list that we have high confidence is going to be quality type questions to predict in Amazon interview. So if you want one of you want that list, everybody, please go to is it blog at day one careers? What's the URL for the blog? Evgeny? Yes. So um, you mean to the Amazon interview questions post? Yes, to that blog. Yep. It is blog dot day one dot careers slash Amazon dash interview dash questions. Wow, I wasn't expecting you to know the exact article URL. That's really impressive. The name gives it away. <laughs> we named them simply. So go there, everybody. And there is a simplified version of the list. And if you like that, there's actually another amazing freebie. We give away so many freebies called the Amazon Interview Tool Pack. And click on that, download it, and it's a massive list of about 116 questions that we pulled in from all around the web and a few other amazing little kind of tools and tricks that you can use in your Amazon interview. So head to that blog and you can download that uh, tool pack there along with all of those questions. And apparently every single question that Red Rain got was on our validated list. So that's validation that our validated list is in fact validated. How about that? How about that? <laughs> Congratulations, Red Rain. We wish you a fantastic Amazon career. We're very proud. Right. Should we move on? Pick another one. Here we go. Hi, Gigi and Yevgeny. So I interviewed for Tam, got rejected. Um, the hiring manager managed, uh, mentioned that they might have already filled that position. Does it mean that I might get contacted by Amazon later? What I'm going to say is that if you got rejected and if their feedback is that you got rejected because the position was filled, not because they didn't want to bring you in, then A, they might, they might reach out to you if they've got other suitable roles, as they do to everyone who passed the Amazon bar, but there wasn't a job to offer them. Um, and you can also apply to for other roles. However, um, if I were you, I would actually go back to your recruiter and I would double check what was the reason why you got rejected because they normally communicate this. And just for context, sometimes what happens is you're going to interview, they're going to vote and they're going to say, it's a great candidate, raise the bar, let's bring them in. But because there was someone interviewing earlier than you, they had to offer the job to them. It's just a weird system that Amazon has, right? They don't compare candidates with each other. The first one that raises the bar usually gets the job. What it means that is that they interviewed you. Yeah, they didn't cancel your interview because someone else got the job. So they interviewed you and then they voted on your candidacy. And then even if you raised the bar and they did want to bring you in, so they voted positively to bring you in, there wasn't a job to give you. And that is actually not a bad state to be because you are pre-cleared for Amazon. And um, if you do interview for very similar roles in the future, they might offer you a shorter um, loop. However, do make sure that this is the reason why you didn't get the job. Clarify this with the recruiter. And if it is indeed the case, then yes, you might see them reaching out for with other roles and you should have an easier time interviewing for other roles. Anything to add, Gigi? Nope, nothing to add. All good. Okay, so I'm going to pick this one because this falls into the myth category. And you know how I love debunking myths. So I'm oh, going to... That's our favorite category, isn't it? Yay! Myth is the polite word for it. The other word has... It's not really a word. It's two words. Uh, and Brian Stanley shares the same first, word, first letters with it. Anyway, moving on... <laughs> I always wonder where I'm going with these things. <laughs> right. So, Syed, hello. So, if the hiring manager says you'll have four different interviews in the loop, does it mean it's an L4 job? Right. So, I hear this across the web all the time where people say that the level that you're applying for directly correlates with the number of interviews that you have. 
And that is not true, because can you imagine being an L7 if every L7 had seven interviewers? Or if you're an L8, then you've got eight. If you're going to be an L10, then you've got 10. Wow, how grossly inefficient would that be? That is Apparently, not it also correlates with the amount of rainfall. That's what I'm hearing. Oh, wonderful. And how many diamonds my husband's going to buy me for my birthday. Yay. Anyway, so no, it's another one of those crazy things where people see data points. This is the difference between correlating data points and causal data points. Right. My one of my favorite subjects as a marketer is the debate over correlation and causality. Right. So there are in some instances a correlation where someone happens to be applying for a particular level and they got a particular number of interviewers on their panel. It's not directly causal. So there are plenty of L4s at the moment who are going through loops with only three. Oh, I hate this truth. But there are a whole bunch of L4s that are now only going to face two interviewers and one bar raiser but there will be other l4s who will find themselves with five four interviewers and a bar raiser it's very variable there are plenty of l6s that will only have five people on their um, loop there are plenty of l7s that will only have five people on their loops there will also be l7s who end up with eight people on their loops it's so variable and those variables have some relationship to your seniority i.e the more senior you are the more likely you are to have more and the more junior you are the more likely you are to have fewer but the actual number of itself is not directly causal of the number of people that will be on your panel. There we go, another myth debunked. Thank you, the internet. Right, Amazing. your turn, Evgeny. There we go. This one is from Annie. <clears throat> hey, for some of the loop questions, I thought it went well, um, and also got a response from the interviewer. Uh, apparently they said it was a great example, but for others, you got more follow-ups. Does that mean that my answers didn't land? I'm going to go ahead and say that Please do not try to correlate your interviewer reaction to your responses during the interview with the actual potential outcome because you will never know. And the reason why is because, A, mannerisms. Some folks are absolutely poker-faced regardless of what they take or you tell them. Some folks are just polite or they're trying to be polite and they're going to say, hey, it's a great example, but they may think it's a great example or may think it wasn't a good example. So that's one thing. Second thing is they it's very unlikely that they're going to be making a decision on how to vote in your candidacy based on uh, their first impression in the interview. Because as you might have noticed, they were typing away while they were interviewing you, perhaps not always maintaining eye contact. And the reason why they're doing that is because they're going to be actually deciding on how to vote on your candidacy, having their notes in front of them and then during the debrief also having other folks' opinions and their notes in front of them so please don't psych yourself out about this just do what you can control and focus on it and how they react uh, to your um, responses during the interview just just ignore it smile and wave as they said in the madagascar one of my favorite cartoons ever there you go Gigi. anything to add other than you just made such an important point, so I just want to reiterate it because this is gold, people. What Evgeny has pointed out is the enormous difference between the pros the way an interviewer at Amazon approaches decision making versus, or should I say, the way an interviewer at Amazon approaches interviewing versus an interviewer for the majority of other companies. An interviewer at Amazon is interviewing you simply to gather data. That's it. That's their only task in the interview. Their task in the moment of the interview is not to make a decision. And you are absolutely trained to take that approach. So the interviewer interview is purely a data gather exercise. All decision making is supposed to be made after the interview when you've had time to reflect on your notes and then ultimately in the debrief everybody else's notes but that's a really important point that Evgeny's made there and worth thinking about as a candidate so great point Evgeny thank you for that one My okay pleasure. I'll be so polite here here is a good question from Hamza 
Can we elaborate on what might be the case if the panel decided to have an extra interview after finishing the on-site interviews? Yes, I can. Absolutely. So this can happen when they can't make a decision. It's kind of as simple as that. In an ideal world, as a bar raiser, you try and bring every single debrief to a conclusion within 30 minutes. And trust me, that's not easy in many cases. But you try and do that because you just want, ultimately, the goal has to be that the process is as short and efficient as possible, considering how much you're put into it. Sometimes that doesn't happen. Sometimes you just can't get to a decision. The bar raiser doesn't feel they can fall on one side or the other, or the bar raiser and the hiring manager really can't get themselves aligned and the bar raiser doesn't feel confident enough to make the final decision, so on and so forth. So what can happen there is the bar raiser then suggests that one final interview happens post the uh, panel set of interviews to get a final opinion. That happened to me when I was being interviewed at Amazon, I had to come back, I think it was a week later, and meet my manager's manager, who was a VP, and have an interview with him. And we all know how that story ended. So I want you to know that even though you have to come back for a final interview, it, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Obviously, it means that the process is not yet over. But on the positive side, it's not a no, right? You still have an opportunity and you're still in the game. So hopefully that's helpful to you, Hamza. Fingers crossed, just do more of what you already did and you, hopefully you'll nail it. Any, anything else to add? Can you think of any other reasons why anyone's going to come back for a final interview that I've missed? For a flyback. No, no, mm. I think it's, uh, I think it's, you, you've pretty much covered. I've, I mean, I haven't done as many loops as you. I was just a lowly hiring manager, you're a buy raiser. So one of my loops, we almost did a flyback, but then a very skillful buy raiser prevented it. But I can see why, yeah, exactly as you responded. I've got a question here, which I think is uh, is really good one, Gigi. Again, this is the, uh, you know, the myth of the day, the second one. So oh, here we go. Right. Kill it. I so I think I think you and I should just descend on this one because it's important. So apparently there's um, a myth out there that you can be promoted within two years for a program manager position. Um, so anyone who tells you anything about how quickly or how long it takes to get promoted at Amazon or at any other company, please don't listen to them because it can happen to you on this timeline. It could happen to you on the longer timeline. And I can tell you that promotional timelines depend on so many different things. The only thing that you can control is your inputs, which is your performance um, and your conversations with your manager about making sure that you've got a solid development plan that stretches you as far as possible. But um, please don't take these words as granted um, anywhere. Is that fair, Gigi? Yeah, so there, absolutely, that's the reality of the situation. There is a kind of a, uh, it's not a policy per se, but it's kind of a, I don't know, I don't know, it's like one of those things, I suppose, in Amazon, where there's this theory that really you need to be in a role for two years before they'll get comfortable that you, you've nailed it. That's kind of an underlining, underlying belief. But that's all it is, is an underlying belief. There are plenty of people that I've seen get promoted before two years, rightly or wrongly. Plenty of people that I've seen get promoted before two years and other people I'm, I've known that are sat in roles for four years, five years, six years. So, yes, there's an underlying kind of philosophy that's not written in any firm policy anywhere that it takes about two years to become an expert in any given role. But that doesn't really mean anything from the reality of the situation. It could be anything. And to Evgeny's point, there are so many variables that influence whether you do or don't get promoted. So if the background to this is that they're offering you a um, lower level, they've down leveled you. I'm kind of reading between the lines here, Evgeny, as to why someone would say this. If they have down leveled you and someone has said to you, yeah, but you can get promoted or will get promoted in two years, do not use that data point as a reason to take the job because it's not really underpinned by data to prove that is true in our experience. Yes, indeed. Right. Okay. Oh, uh, oh, 
can I have this one? I like this one. I like this one. I want this one. Let's do this one. And after that, I need to run. You need to go. Yes. Okay. Oh, we are five minutes over. All right. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. So, right. You're having an on-site with seven people in five interviews. Okay, so you've got two shadows. That, shadows are getting heavier, aren't they? Usually the policy was that you should only really have one shadow on a loop, but uh, two is the maximum. But there's plenty of people getting two these days, although I think that's because they're ramping up. Is it okay that's to ask for feedback at the end of each interview? No, it's not. Um, as I mentioned earlier on in this session, the purpose of that interview is to gather data. No interviewer should be coming to any conclusions about your interview until they leave the room and sit and reflect on the notes. So the situation you might find yourself in is more often than not, the interviewer will either give you some nonsense that they just make up on the spot because you've put them in a corner that they weren't prepared for. And you'll end up with nonsense that isn't actually a true reflection of their thoughts. And that could end, end up sending you off in completely the wrong direction. Or you'll get what I would give you, which is uh, I don't have any feedback because I haven't really thought about it because all I've been doing is gathering data in this session. So Amazonians are not meant to give feedback. That's the policy. I suggest you don't corner an Amazonian and ask them to tell you something that they're not supposed to tell you because I don't think it will ever end well. That's my personal opinion. Evgeny, anything to add? So very simply, ask you can, but whether you're going to get anything useful, probably not. So I'd say don't do it. Right. So two things I just want to do before we go. If you want to run, Evgeny, you can run and I'll give everyone their freebie. So don't feel you have to. Hang I'm around. running, guys, to put my kids to bed. Important task. So good luck, Very everyone. Good. GG. Take care, folks. All right. See you soon, Evgeny. So very quickly then, before we wrap up, I want to just say hello to Samesh, who said hello earlier and is always here reliably. And I, I love having people who come back and give us support. I appreciate it so much. I'm going to say the, say the same for Lego, my ego, who also is an amazing support for our channel. So mwah, I appreciate you so much. With that said, let me give you the best freebie best freebie that is available I reckon anywhere but definitely on YouTube for Amazon interview preparation what you need to do is go this is easier now that he's gone because it covers the whole screen uh, don't tell him I said that go to this URL here day one.careers forward slash Amazon dash interview dash with and you can get totally for free our customer obsession course it's just one little course that exists within our overall Amazon interview with course but it's there to kind of give you a sense of the quality of our course it will tell you about the key facets of the customer obsession leadership principle facets is a learning model that we created at day one careers nobody else has it unless they copied it from us and it is a more nuanced way of understanding the complexity of the leadership principle it really simplifies it up and helps you identify the best types of examples that you might want to bring so the four facets of customer obsession it also tells you what the interviewer is looking for in terms of your actual behaviors that they want to see demonstrated from customer obsession. And it also has a mock interview, pre-recorded mock interview of me interviewing me, different clothes, different hair. It's obviously very believable. Um, <laughs> so you can see how it all comes together in the actual final interview. So please do go take that. It's totally free. And honestly, it stands on its own two feet as a piece of content. It's not one of these ridiculous pieces of content that don't tell you anything and you then have to buy the full course in order to be able to get anything valuable out of it. No, Custom Obsession course stands on its own two feet. Watch that and you will know exactly what you need to do when it comes to your Custom Obsession questions in your interviews. So with that said, thank you everyone for joining. I very much appreciate it. If you did land yourself jobs, congratulations again. We're super, super proud of you. Everyone who's come back to give us support again, very much appreciate that. And if you have an interview coming up this week, we wish you the very best of luck. If we didn't get to your question, you can always put it in the comments section of any of our videos. And as I said, please do give us a thumbs up or a little comment on any of the videos that you watch as a little bit of a return for our efforts. Until next week, take care, everybody stay safe. Good luck. Thank you for joining. Bye bye.